Hey guys, just a quick disclaimer before the video. Within this series, I'll be using brackets, an open source editor like Notepad++, but more for coding. So if you want to go get it, the link will be in the description. Anyway, enjoy the video and have a nice day. Hey guys, this is it's me, Leeson, and today I'll be doing this tour on how to make a cookie clicker styled website. So as you see, this is the one I made earlier today with the design template from HTML5 up. If you want to get a template from HTML5 up, the link will be in the description below, but I'll be doing it from the basics, so you're going to have to figure out where to position it all if you want it to look nice. i am used the identity one. So as you see, you can click to make the cookies go up. You've got a save feature, so if I just refresh, I can load it back up to get all my cookies back. I refresh the page and click load. I've got my cookies back. So we could expand on that maybe in another episode where we get add-ons such as auto clickers and stuff which generate cookies per second and make some kind of achievement system for people to feel like they're accomplishing steps within the game. Anyway, apart from that, we'll be just working on a blank page, no style or template usage. So first off, like every other HTML document, it would be good if you know HTML a bit already as you're gonna know what we're doing. So we're gonna have a head tag, but in the head we're just gonna only be adding the title. So within the title, we'll be updating this amount with the amount of cookies they've got. So each time they click, the title will go up by a cookie. So now we've got the title and head done, we need to move on to the body. So let's open up the body tag and close it off down there. We'll add some spacing in between. Right, so we're going to first start off with the cookie image. So for that we're going to want to make a href where we, inside we have the onclick event which will trigger the function for adding cookies onto a variable which will be displayed for them. So this is where the image is going to be in between. So to start an image you want a image tag so img source equals and then we've just called it cookie jpeg oh cookie jpeg well it's a jpeg file not cookie jpeg so when you are doing an image url you want to make sure that the document is in the same folder as the html document as you see this is the folder cookie tutorial and they're both inside the same folder with cookie jpeg being next to cookie html if you have it in another folder like an image folder you can go image for the folder name and then cookie but that the image folder would have to be inside of cookie tutorial so you gotta keep that in mind so now moving on we shall let add some breakpoints so underneath the image we can I put you got and the amount of cookies will be like that the amount of cookies can be put inside of a input box but we are going to have to make sure we disable the input box and therefore they can't just edit their cookies so we'll put disabled style and we're also going to text align to the center we'll zoom out a little bit there we go so next one we shall let's start the script wait i don't know if we actually have to close the input I don't normally close the input. Mm, we'll just leave it. Right, so we're gonna put our script in which this is where the function for adding the cookies will be. So when they click on the image cookie, it's gonna unclick add, which is this function here within the JavaScript. The script tag basically is telling the document it's gonna be JavaScript or some other type of script but normally javascript is what's going to be embedded but you can also have it externally linked as a rel like css style sheets can be embedded well inline or external linked so we're just going to do it inline as it's easier we need to add some brackets there all right uh cookie count equals cookie count plus one but cookie count doesn't exist yet so for the HTML, we're gonna do another script in which we set the variable for cookie count to zero. So now, when we click on it, it's gonna basically just get this 
so it's going to go the cookie count is zero so it's going to just go zero equals zero plus one so now if they've now got one it's going to go one equals one plus two so then that is now going to equal three so after that we're going to find the id which is text for this input so we're going to go get id text dot value so then the value of it is going to be cookie count so now it should display that so we'll click it and it's going to go you got you got you got but we haven't got any system to save it or anything along those lines so we could probably set this to be zero at start but it should be fine All right so also from earlier we said we're going to be wanting to update the tile so now we're going to go document dot title equals cookie count and then we want plus cookies so what that's going to do we'll just close it off so then it's going to set the title to the amount of cookies so in this case it'll be zero which it already was from when we set it so we could actually just remove this and put like cookie game but then when we click it it's going to go one cookie two cookie three cookies blah 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 and it might have a delay if you're using an auto clicker because it's obviously having to continuously update the tile but other than that that's fine so that should be all we need for the add function so next we are going to put let's see you got that amount and then we're going to go cookies Boom. so now that should right oh god oops it is that was weird i might have refreshed it by mistake brackets so we'll just keep it like that for now we'll add a space though oh wait we can't do that because it's not in a paragraph tag oh well that'll do uh so now we're just going to add some more breakpoints so underneath the input box and the text it's going to go and be some buttons these buttons are going to save and load as well as reset we're going to do saving and loading by using local storage on the browser so if we right click and inspect oh we've got it over here okay here we go so as you see we want to go to application and then it's going to be stored in here as you see it's already got some set from the last thing so we're just going to delete these and they're not going to disappear until we do that so right now it's got no keys stored with any values so we're going to set a key which is going to be the cookie count visit count was for the other site but we're not going to include that because it's not needed so button and we're going to want a inside of that a another href which is going to allow us to do another on click event and let's go save there we go so inside of that we just going to put some text reset because then we got that so if we click it it's going to do nothing yet because we haven't created the wait why are we going to put reset oh, sorry about that so it's not going to save our cookies yet so if we do loads it's not going to do all, and it's not going to update in here because we haven't done anything for it so let's also create a button for loading at the same time so we're just going to do the same thing apart from change the function name to load oh I almost forgot put load there as well right so after we've got the save and load we're going to do another script tagging area where we're going to include the functions for save and load Right, so inside of these two, we're going to want to include the stuff for saving it and loading it. So when we're saving it, it's pretty simple. You just want to go local storage dot set item and then the string of it, which we're just going to go cookie count because that's how we're going to refer to it. And then cookie count the variable. So it's going to use the variable cookie count, which is obviously whatever it is when we click the save button and store it as the name cookie count so then when we're loading it we're going to want to go cookie count because we're going to want to override the current variable which is nothing if you're loading it up or whatever it is so we're going to override cookie count variable with local storage 
going to get the item of cookie count because that's what it's called. Uh, no, I almost forgot to close that off with that. And we want to cookie count. We want to parse it, otherwise, if it's not going to be an integer, then it's not going to display. Well, it is going to display as whatever it is displayed as. However, like without this, we can we'll remove it, and I'll show you what it does if we don't have it after we do the rest. You know, we'll just show it now. So now, if we get some cookies, we we'll click save, and I'll get some more. So load, but it's just going to screw up and. Let's just get this. So right now the cookies is saved as 26. But when we load it, it's obviously not going to load 26. Because it's going to show whatever is in the input. The input box isn't being overwritten. And because it's not an integer, when we click onto it, it's not going to add on. It's adding on a single cookie to a shrink instead of to an integer. So that's why that's not going to be working. So it may be 26 here, but that's being counted as a string not an integer so that's why we have to parse it so cookie count is now going to equal parse the integer so it's going to pass the string and then make an integer so we're just taking cookie count which is cookie count but at the moment it's a string from when we got the item so we're just putting it into an integer so it can be worked with so I want to get the element again by the oh, by the text, and then we want to go dot value equals cookie count because whatever it is when we load it, right? Let's get some whatever it is when we load it, it will not override if this isn't here. Like, let me show you. So we got, we got some, and then when we load it, it's then going to show after we add one onto it. So we need that line so it updates straight away on the load. And also, because of the same reason, we're also going to have to do the title again. Because title won't update till the next cookie is added from this function. Because this function updates it, but there's nothing continuously updating it. And there wouldn't be no need for continuously updating it. So now, if we get some cookies, save it. In the local storage, it's going to save as 41. So get some more and load it's gonna load up that value now get some more save it let's just refresh that it's 64 so that's how we can save the amount of cookies we've got so next episode oh actually that's not doing its job so when we load in it's not refreshing this uh, oh it's because we had a double T in tile so now if we load, there we go, now it's working, load, okay, there we go. So in the next episode, if you guys enjoyed this one, if the next one will probably be starting some upgrades. So below these save and load buttons, we'll probably have some pictures for like a finger, which will be auto clicker from the original game, kind of, or you can have whatever upgrades you want, which can do stuff like give you a cookie per second, give you 10 cookies per second, or just a continuous play, maybe a times two multiplier, so you get two every click, and we'll work from there. So anyway guys, that's the first episode of how to make a cookie styled game on a website in HTML. Hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, leave a like and subscribe for more. See you.